Hello learners, welcome to the studio of NIOS. I am Dr. Asha Singh from Lady Irvin College with my two little friends uh, Kavita and Tanya. Today we are talking about lesson 2, Early Childhood in India and our topic for today is Profile of Early Childhood. By profile of early childhood, what are the different influences on children? There is the famous nature-nurture debate, uh, what we call what you inherit and what the environment, what your family gives you. It is also known by names as genetics and empiricist, which means that uh, what do you inherit from your genes and what do you observe which influences you. Or in some debates, it's also very easily you may will relate with this heredity and environment. You have heard that each person has traits. They inherit the color of their hair, the color of their eyes, height, and this also this often depends on what the parents are like. This is what is called genetics. There are many other not so visible influences such as instincts, emotion, mental functions that are part of your heredity. Environment is what is determined by the social surroundings where people live, the nature of experiences that impact the growth of different domains such as physical, are you getting enough food, are, are you getting enough exercise, um, are you getting people to interact with, um, are you getting enough stimulation. So whatever your environment uh, provides you is referred to as environmental factors. We often say how your nature, what is you get by nature, what you get by your genes, how it interacts. So it's neither everything depends on nature, everything depends on your genes or everything depends on what you um, experience. Now, two people from the same family can be different because as they grow, their experiences become different. So what is really important to know is that how does your genetic material interact, encounter uh, with nature, that how nature is nurtured. That is what different environmental forces and facilities that are become available to children. Opportunity, stimulation, really, they say brain is the most plastic thing, that it, it is waiting to be stimulated, it is waiting to uh, get different kinds of opportunities. So, we will understand now, we will look at how deprivation, deficit, limited resources impacts uh, your growth. Let us study the situation of children in India. The disparity you see, some people live in small homes, some people live in big homes, some people live in congested areas, some people live in very open spaces. So there is a lot of economic variation, economic differences. So what happens to children here? Now let us look at these several figures. According to several surveys set up by the government, and this is the National Family and Health Survey, uh, it tells that child population under six is 158.7 million. According to the NFHS4 survey, which is set up by the government, child population under six is 158.7 million. 19.8 million children below age six in India are undernourished. Only 9.6% of, of children between 6 to 23 months receive an adequate diet. Total immunization coverage in the country now is at 62%, which is a good figure, but yes, still many, many children are not getting immunized. Some more facts, let's look according to the NFHS survey again. 38% uh, children, that is one in three children between zero to five years are stunted. They're not getting enough food. In the first slide we saw that they are malnourished. Here, what is the condition that happens? They're not able to get enough food for, you know, the optimal kind of growth that can happen. So it's called, referred to as stunted. They don't grow enough. Then they don't grow physically, which is one in five of the children in the country suffer from wasting. Again, they don't grow properly. 36% uh, of the children under five years of age are underweight. Uh, and they do not get full, 
they do not get enough uh, diet to gain full weight. 58 percent of the children between 6 months to 5 years were found to be anemic. That means they did not get enough uh, nutritive diet or enough nutrients. So they are low in iron. So this is one of the things that happens about due to economic deprivation. Now, if a child is hungry, he is not going to be able to concentrate and learn uh, enough skills to be able to be a, you know, happy child, happy person, to be able to contribute enough to society because the learning skills will lack because there is less concentration. So things are. Uh, not getting enough nutrition will impact your concentration. Not getting enough nutrition will impact your health. Uh, India's nutrition, malnutrition problem results not only from calorie intake, but from dependence on a very high carbohydrate diet because, and low in protein, which does not give you that sort of stunting and wasting and deficiencies in nutrition. Poverty becomes stressful to parents and that also gives, um, you know, kind of tension to parents and they might not be able to give the kind of love that is required for happy ch childhood. So let us see what other influences economic conditions can have. Access to school, health care, child survival, maternal health and lack of opportunity for optimal development. Now education of children is improving in our country because we see higher enrollment and higher retention rates. Uh, many girls are deprived, so I am very happy to share, their enrollment is increasing, but not enough. And they are, you know, culturally they are believed to be um, staying at home because, you know, they have to get married and that is a cultural belief in many of the communities. So you have to ensure that children get, both girls and boys, get equal opportunity and make the choices that they want to do. Uh, we all have seen this change gradually, despite strong hurdles presented by communities. Government has given cash transfers, cycle, cycles for safe travel, uh, so that more and more girls can, and we must ensure that more, so, uh, more civil, you know, civil society support comes to girls. We provide a healthy, uh, qualitatively appropriate environment for children in all schools. Some of the figures tell us because of the efforts uh, that our government gives, one in four children of school going age is out of school in our country. That is, we were talking about what are the changes that are having in a positive direction. And yet, let's look at the figures again. All children are not able to still go to school and this is from the census of 2011. Some figures may still have gone up. Of every 100 children, only 32% of the children finish school. For economic reasons, they go to work. But we can try and merge things that let the children work uh, after school. Let them attend because in the you know, contemporary times, literacy is very important. And so much the different uh, changes are happening in the use of technology that we cannot do without literacy. And again, we have to also look at cultural beliefs about gender. Uh, we talked about it in the beginning, religion in childhood, socialization and schooling, and disability, opportunity and choices. So these are also some of the aspects that influence, uh, you know, children's growth. Uh, we talked about many families and communities believe that the girl should be married very early. So uh, some of the data tells us that some girls, quite a large number of girls under 15 are married and have a child. Uh, we have to look at it that is the girl's body ready for this? So we have to review, we have to talk to parents. How, how will it interact with you? How does it come in your exposure? It comes when you as working in educational settings can have dialogues with parents. Uh, Again, religion will give different kinds of influences. A child may come with, uh, you know, a particular kind of clothing. So, again, awareness that some children dress in a particular manner. Disability. Now, disability limits being fully functional sometimes. The child may not be able to walk. The child may be not so attentive. Our effort should be to find ways and 
um, you know, ac increase acceptance and provide for the special educational needs of children who are um, presenting certain limitations in interaction, in learning and in concentration. Uh, some of the supportive measures that are, that are happening in our country are reservation. They are also working on attitudinal changes. There is educational support. We talked about um, free education, uh, meals during hot meals being served um, in educational settings so that families say, think that at least one square meal the child will get in the school. We are also looking at integrated package of services where which is our headship uh, you know, which is the leading program of the government, which is the Integrated Child Development Services, which looks at immunization, health, education, um, and, you know, support for mothers, uh, along with, um, you know, care of health of adolescent girls. Uh, so, there are all kinds of efforts to strive towards equality and provide economic support to families by creating employment opportunities. Therefore, in our educational setting, we need to be vigilant towards differences and try and give equal opportunity and uh, positive attitudes towards each other. Uh, this news item tells you about some of the ways in which uh, the malnutrition is being tackled, like eggs could help reduce India's chronic child mal malnutrition a new survey shows. So therefore, research studies are also uh, providing and looking at how to solve, uh, you know, hunger, uh, malnutrition, not getting enough food. So in summary, uh, the demographic profile is a bit disheartening, despite the fact that small little steps are happening for improvement. So those are the diverse social contexts, and they affect childhood. They affect children's growth. They limit children's opportunity for, uh, if you are not taking action, uh, the, they, 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 they don't let all children thrive. I hope you enjoyed the lesson. Thank you.